Soldiers of the Press. This week, Kiska Mission. All 500. All 500. Course 042. He's off. He's off. Control to signal bridge. Control to signal bridge. Signal bridge, aye. Time check. Time check, aye, aye, sir. Zero, five, four, five hundred. Less fifteen. Less ten. Less five. Check. Time check over. By 5.45 on the morning of a sultry day in August, the final phase of the American invasion of the island of Kiska had begun. Canadian and American troops by the thousands lined the sides of ships, ready to leap aboard landing craft and swarm ashore at Broad Beach, Bamboo Bay, Quisling Cove. The greatest armada of naval vessels ever assembled in the war against Japan carried the load of fighting men and ammunition to this last Jap stronghold in the Aleutians. Slowly and steadily, the mighty fleet approached the island. On board one of the troop transports was Russell Annabelle, United Press staff correspondent. Annabelle, like all other United Press men on the fighting fronts, was to go into battle unarmed, unprotected. His job was to get an eyewitness account of that battle. And here it is, the story of the Allied invasion of Kiska by United Press correspondent Russell Annabelle. Mr. Annabelle, Russell Annabelle. Yes, Lieutenant, over here. You've been assigned to Major Walker's patrol, sir. I think you'd better join him now. Sure, of course. Which way, Lieutenant? This way. Over this way. I followed the Lieutenant over to the side of the ship, where a fair-sized group of men were standing and huddled together. All around us were similar groups. It was a weird scene. The men had smeared camouflage paint all over their faces. They looked like actors waiting for the cue. The cue to go out and kill, or be killed. The men had sweated it out all night, and now, with the zero hour approaching, they faced the situation squarely. They were brave and frightened. The Major was giving them right, a final man. briefing as I walked One last up. word. We're to land on Broad Beach. Engineers are already ashore cleaning up landmines and booby traps. That's their job. We've got the easy job. All we have to do is fight. Time, Sergeant. About three and a half minutes to go, sir. All right. That's all, boys, except... Good luck, and give them hell. Yes, sir. We're going to give them hell. Come on, you guys. Sergeant, final check. Yes, sir. Okay. Each man check the guy on his left. Right, Sarge. Come on. Okay, Sarge. Yo, Cameron. Who done your face? Who put the paint on? Why, me, Sergeant. Who else? Now, ain't that nice. Cameron, your nose is showing. Imagine that. Cover it. You ain't going to lose kiss on the count of your nose. Come on, go on, cover it. Okay. All okay, Major. All right, men, get set. Any minute now. Any minute. And remember, for God's sake, keep quiet. The burglar's in the house, but the baby's asleep in the next room, see? <laughs> Gee, a baby? What baby? Somebody smother that guy. Zero. Zero. Landing parties away. Section 2, oh, five, over. Section A, A. Five, That's us. Over. Let's go. All right, Major. With a smothered over. cheer, the men dropped over the sides of the ship into the landing barges below. As I slid down the net into the Major's craft, I found myself muttering over and over, This is it. This is it. The invasion of Kiska had begun. The trip to the shore of Broad Beach seemed to take hours. We crouched forward in the barge, anxiously scanning the mist-enveloped beach. Around us, I could see other barges loaded with men riding through the waves. We strained our ears, but other than the sound of the sea, we heard nothing. No guns, nothing. The men were tense, nervous. They sat holding rifles, hand grenades. The Major... See anything, Russell? Not a thing, Major. Me either. The beach looks empty. Those Japs are tricky devils. Never know when they'll pop out at you. Yeah, I've seen them rise out of nothing. Let them rise. We're ready. All right. Here we are. Hey, just look at that beach. 
broad beach. Hell, it's about as wide as a ruler. All right, men. Ready. Okay. Down the ramp. Scramble. All right. All right. Assemble. Everybody assemble. Quiet. They haven't spotted us. Get down flat. Sergeant, hold that up. Right, sir. Here it is. Eight, eight, five to Boy Holland two. Boy Holland two to eight, eight, five. Go ahead. Go ahead. Landing concluded without incident. No sign of enemy. Over. Good. Proceed to objective. Watch out for traps and landmines. Bearing left on beach. Boy Holland two. Over. Right. Eight, eight, five. Over and off. Sergeant, let's go. Tell your men to watch out for mines and booby traps. Yes, sir. Okay, everybody. Feet off the ground. Walk with your eyes. Traps and mines. Mines? You mean gold? Okay, okay, funny man. Just watch it, that's all. Just watch it. We moved on up the beach. The men fanned out in single file formation as we made our way over the tundra toward the highlands. We crept along slowly, cautiously. Not a sound did we hear. Not a jap did we see. Eerie, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like this. Go slow, Frank. Go slow. Sure. Hey. Hey, Sarge. Ain't that one of them? Huh? Jap? Where? Nah, a trap. Huh? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, sure it is. Look out, Frank. Don't touch it. Okay. Just look at that, will you? If that ain't clumsy. A tin can loaded with dynamite. They use a nail as a detonator. Ah, the stupid jerks. Our objective was a heavy Jap emplacement on a crest of Robber Hill. We all tightened up as we crawled nearer and nearer. Easy now. Easy. Watch it. Watch it. Major, look. There's a Jap. He's moving. I think he sees us. All right, all right. Keep your men back. I'm going up. I'm with you, Tom. Hey, hey, me too. We decided to flank the emplacement, moving in on the Japs from the rear. We crawled painfully through the grass, expecting at any minute the Japs would spot us and blow us to hell. As we reached the top, the sergeant pulled out a hand grenade and... Oh, baby! Look at all of them rats. This is going to be a pleasure. Two grenades should do it. Major, look. Huh? Look up there. Listen, they're going to see us in a minute. I'm going to heave this. Sergeant, wait a minute now. Don't throw it. But, Major, them Don't Japs... Don't throw is... that grenade. Look. Huh? Well, I'll be damned. Look at that, will you? Those ain't chaps at all. Just a flock of stinking scarecrows. And that's what they were. This Japanese emplacement was armed to the hilt with mortars, field pieces, and machine guns, all manned and guarded by straw scarecrows. We couldn't believe it. The sergeant just lay there, shaking his head. Ah, I could have sworn they was moving. I could have sworn they was moving. We rested a moment while we inspected the guns and mortars. The major called me over. Russell, look at this. Yeah, all these guns are freshly oiled. No rust on them anywhere. Means the Japs haven't been gone long. They might be anywhere over the next ridge or on top of the next hill. Anywhere. Of course, the Major was right. We were up against the trickiest soldiers in the business. As most of us knew from better experience, nothing is too low or sneaky for a Jap to attempt. And we could not afford to become careless. These Japs might be anywhere, any place at all. But where? The Major gave the command, and with the rest of the patrol, we moved on. Our next objective was the main enemy garrison. We circled back over the tundra and on down to the beach... And we were again warned by field phone to watch out for landmines and booby traps. As we picked our way carefully through the fog, one of the men... Major. Major, sir, look over here. What is it? Me and Jim found something over here, sir. All right, all right. Now, what is it? See? By the water, sir. A whole flock of footprints. That's right. All leading to the water. What do you make of that, Russell? I don't know, but it's beginning to look like... Geez, I feel like Robinson Crusoe. Where are them nips anyway? I don't know, son. But one thing's sure, we're going to find out. 
By now, the fog had become so thick we could barely see ten feet in front of us. This heightened the feeling that we were walking right into a trap. Among the men, tension mounted as we neared our objective. In a low voice, the Major ordered the men to spread out and move in on the garrison in a sweeping half-circle. As we closed in on the enemy stronghold, the second order came. Fix bayonets. Fix bayonets. Fix bayonets. As we crept nearer and nearer... Hey, Sarge. Shut up! Listen, Sarge. There's something moving in that dugout up ahead. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Come on. Let's get her. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now get her on by the door there. And when I give the word, you kick it open. And I'll toss this hand grenade in. Yeah, then what? Then we run like hell. Got it, Frank? Sure, let's go. All right. Easy now. Easy. Okay, Frank! Stop it, Sarge. Hold it. Look, them ain't Japs. They're dogs. Well, I'll be damned. Five dogs. What is this? Sergeant, what's wrong here? Dogs. Uh, what's that? No, Japs, just dogs. You know, Major, at this moment, I'm probably the most frustrated guy in the United States Army. Like Russell Annabelle in the North Pacific area, United Press correspondents in every theater of military operations are living with our armed forces. Daily, they go with them into action to get the exciting stories of daring and bravery that lie behind the official communiques. We will bring you another thrilling story of these soldiers of the press soon. Be sure to listen. And remember to listen for United Press news on the air. Look for United Press dispatches in your favorite newspaper. They are your guarantee of the world's best coverage of the world's biggest news.